Thanks so much for being a part of our Passion Week experience. Today we will open God's word and we will worship through song as we look at the journey that Jesus took that ultimately leads to a cross and that cross paid for our redemption. We're excited that you're here today and let's dive in together. We've been talking about the events of Holy Week and everything has been leading up to this point. Pontius Pilate had condemned Jesus to be put to death. Jesus was led outside the city to be crucified. And if you know anything about ancient crucifixion, you know that it was one of the most cruel and painful ways to be put to death that have ever been created. See, a person was crucified and they didn't die from blood loss or injury. No, when they hung up there on that cross, the, the weight of their body compressed down on their lungs and they would struggle to breathe. And so they'd have to, they'd have to push up on their arms and their feet to try and catch a breath. And after struggling for hours or even days, they would get too weak to push themselves back up and they would suffocate. It was an agonizing and inhuman way to die. So it's no surprise that the Romans would use this type of execution as a way to intimidate people. It was a way to keep others from stepping out of line. This was a clear message about what happens to those who disobeyed. And yet as we think about the events of Good Friday, it could be easy for us to focus on the physical agony that Jesus endured and so we would forget about all the significance. I want us to really focus in on two things Jesus said while he was on the cross. The first thing that Jesus cried out was, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why would God forsake his own son? Well, it's because sin separates us from the holy God. And on that cross, Jesus was paying for. He was being charged for the sins of the whole world. See, Jesus' death on the cross isn't just a sad story. It's not just a gross miscarriage of justice. It's not just one more example of people with power oppressing people without power. No, on that cross, Jesus was being charged with, he was paying for the sins of the whole world. And that leads us to the second thing Jesus said that I want us to focus on. Right near the end of his life, Jesus asked for a drink so that his mouth could be wet. He wanted to be able to muster up as much strength to say as loud as he could, It is finished. The payment was complete. If our sin is a mountain in front of God, Jesus didn't just make the down payment so the debt collector would get off our backs. He didn't just lower the interest rate so that we could afford the monthly payments. No, Jesus paid the amount in full. He paid everything down to the last penny to destroy that mountain that was before God. That is our sin. So did it work? Was Jesus right when he said, it is finished? In the Jewish legal system, every testimony needed to be established by two or three witnesses in order for it to be certain. And Jesus so often applied that principle in his life. He would say something about himself, but he would also appeal to his Father in heaven as a second witness. On the cross just before he died, Jesus did that one final time. He cried out, it is finished. And then the very last thing he did was entrust his life into God the Father's hands. He committed the final verdict to a second witness, God the Father. So as we remember Good Friday today, we don't do it by pretending that we don't know how it turns out. No, in fact, we only remember Good Friday because we know how it turned out. We look at Good Friday through the lens of Easter Sunday. On Good Friday, Jesus entrusted that final verdict to God the Father. And God the Father showed through the resurrection that it is finished. The cross was a sign of it was torture, of pain, agony, intimidation. And as people saw those criminals, they were supposed to look the other way and get back to their lives of obeying the Roman government. But now, because of Jesus' crucifixion, everything has changed. Now that the cross is a sign of beauty. You'll see it in churches, homes, businesses, around people's necks, and we look at the cross rather than away from it. It's just as Jesus predicted. He said when he was lifted up, 
that he would be suspended between earth and heaven and he would draw all people to himself. Why? How? See, because everything Jesus went through, he went through willingly. And everything Jesus went through, he went through for you and for me. So we're going to close out this Holy Week, this Passion Week teaching the way we began. By worshiping Jesus and acknowledging who he is and what he did on that cross. Let's worship together. scripture and we're going to take communion together. We wanted to equip you with a couple of resources so that you could be prepared to engage in that experience with us. And so we're inviting you to stop by our building anytime this week to pick up individually wrapped communion elements for you and your family. And if you're not able to get by our building, we ask that you would go to the store and grab some crackers or some bread and some juice so that you can be ready to take part of the remembrance of communion with us Friday at 6 30. We also wanted you to know that we have not one, but two live experiences planned for Easter Sunday. And so we are asking that you be prepared to experience Easter with us. And so we are excited to unveil an out of the box experience that's unique for this year and this season specifically. So we are inviting you to invite others to be a part 10 a.m., 6 p.m. Easter Sunday together. God bless. We hope you have a great week.